Yeah, I wonder how many riders would take the opportunity to go do a run or you offer them like a slow conservative, you won't crash. Right? You don't tell them at times, it's okay, you won't crash or you can go up and you're definitely going to have a better result, but there's a chance you crash. You know, someone like Amri, he, yep. his attitude towards this race, you could hear it. He's like, I just want to have fun. I want to see what it's like. Um, I love these conditions. You know, he's got nothing to lose. He's, you know, he's back in the overall, or he was a lot more behind in the overall. And you could hear it. And and riding in the wet, as as you would know, it is about attitude. It is about your strategy. But it's like, are you negative about it? Are you bummed that it's raining? Or are you saying, hey, it is what it is. I, I'm yeah. so stoked to go and do a race run in these conditions. Like not every rider in the start gate is thinking that. There's no way. It's not possible. Nah, probably 80% were already like, oh, shit, what do we do now? And um, for me, those conditions normally are the best because it's such a good opportunity to get a result. Um, you know that a lot of people have already like kind of mentally given up a little bit. Like they're like, oh shit, how we just got to ride down. But there, if you have that little bit of negativity, then that kind of plays into your riding, and then most likely you crash, even if you were riding well. Like because just because you're thinking, you're coming into the race with the wrong mindset, and you kind of just have to laugh and get on with it, like. You're like, well, let's have fun now, really. So, and then you can kind of get into the run and and ride loose because you have to ride loose when it's wet like that to be able to keep getting grip everywhere. Um, And you have to stay pretty relaxed rather than try and just push. It definitely wasn't a race to push it out of the start as we saw with some people's starts. Yeah, and... uh... And, and, and as you said, if you're riding not to crash, that's you're really sort of behind the eight ball mentally. You, you do often ride tighter. We've both done race runs where we probably th- had in the back of the mind a tough section or hesitation. We just didn't want to crash or we qualified well, right? And then you, you don't want to... You ride tight. You, and, and you could see it in some of the riding styles. And and it's easier said than done. It's easy for me to sit here and... And, and sort of hypothetically say what was going through some of the riders' mindsets. Some of them were committed, were riding extremely well, and literally track conditions took them out, you know? Mm-hmm. Some of them were yep. conservative into the lower woods, into that steep stuff that is basically the topic of the game. But maybe, like, if we reverse it a little bit, you know, how did the week unfold? You had a lot of weather coming in through that region, so you had quite a soft track, um, a lot of roots exposed because now you know it's a couple of years into using a lot of the same sections so practice looked very challenging in the beginning and then you've got this track that's soft holes are developing and then it's getting drier and drier and that that becomes that's why it was so blue groove that's why it was so slick because you've got these hard hard ruts and just moisture sitting on top of the most compacted track by the time say semi-finals looked like optimum conditions yeah it was pretty prime for the semi-finals um just the track really developed differently to leger has done in the past like because of that wet weather prior um and it rained pretty hard at the end of track walk so the track got quite deep in certain bits like some of the ruts were real deep and they're real sharp so like it was super easy to cross rut um I think at the end of each day, they did have the course maintenance crew go down and like fix a lot of the ruts so oh, that really? they were easy. Yeah, pretty much. They were doing a lot of work on the track. Like they had to cut quite a lot of routes and fix a lot of ruts. They do a lot more work than they ever did in the past. Like I remember back when we and in our heyday needles. Um, <laughs> you still in your yeah. heyday? I'm past <laughs> the heyday, but thanks. Um, we were just. We'd just ride the same track all weekend and be like, if you couldn't deal with a rut, it was like, it was on to you to change your line. Now, now they do quite a lot of work to, to the track, but it does make it better for the racing um, because some of the ruts were so sharp and they were really narrow. So you'd just be getting cross rutted either way if you were not perfectly straight. And um, it was a real hard track to like, to get through, even just on practice day, like, because it got kind of dry in the afternoon, but it was still so slick everywhere. 
and you saw Armory and Loic and and probably like I don't know fifty to seventy percent of the riders have quite solid crashes because you could push but then you just hit a root and you couldn't even really see it because there's so much dappled light. Um when it was sunny around certain times of the day there'd be like you go from full light to full dark and that top section where you enter the woods and it's like maybe 55 60 k's an hour into the woods and then you can't see anything and then there was quite a lot of sections of track like that so you couldn't read it very easily and then you're hitting a route and then you eat shit like pretty big crashes from not really a mistake just like you can't see the line and you didn't see that route so you had to be really particular and like I think the track walk and the course or like the um, teams having people on track really would have helped this week and and that those people could have helped massively in the final if they had contact with their riders whilst watching the live stream like some some riders probably should have adjusted their lines a little bit more for that wet race but um they tried to go for it a bit in that bottom section and i think that really cost a lot of um runs that were going well you know yeah i think that's well said and that's interesting you bring that up about course maintenance because i was chatting to bren we watched the race when we had mega and one question i had and it's interesting to hear that they did do some work because i said to him are we not in a place where like in motocross if there's bad weather they prep the track for safety and for good racing and they prep the first turn like that's part of motocross or supercross yeah. you know depending on the heats and stuff they do work on the track say it gets dangerous say all these things so we're not at the point it, obviously they couldn't do the whole track but if you know it's going to rain like it did uh, and you go up and you go okay let's find the slickest most terrible clay sections and let's dig them up yeah. you know like you yeah. said let's dig a few ruts because now it's just unpredictable it's not about skill it's not about going slow it's literally there's only one way to go there's only one speed and like you said okay whether you saw the route or not if there's no other line that's where you got to go and then it's luck of the draw you know so yeah. i'm at the point that i'm saying i would i would rather have a fairer race like try and dig up that steep section at the bottom yeah. before the guys go up tell everyone like it's only going to be better it's like, we haven't changed the course <laughs> yeah. for the worse it's only going to be safer the racing is going to be better i'm at that point what do you think about that yeah i would agree maybe but i kind of like that it would you would practice it before but if you dug it up quite a bit it would get really soft as well so it would have been hard to dig anything in that rain yeah um, fair enough and then like so you'd have to do it before the event but um i spoke with rory briefly and he said the original layout of that bottom chute that was taking everyone out they wanted to go straight down and then straight into that big boom that that people was like where valley slid out and a lot of bernie as well like a lot of riders slid out on the big boom before the, the jump out into the open the reese wilson jump um so they wanted to go straight down and not have that other turn if they'd have done that everyone in, in would have got everyone would have gone straight off the berm like there would be no way to slow down like because it's just clay yeah so they did put that other berm back in that that was the old line but they rebuilt the whole berm so the berm was actually pretty during the practice and semi-final day like it was insane that berm was like real steep so you could you could hook it and they took they were digging the ruts out of that one every time as well each day so it was a good line that they had to do that rather than going what the original line was fought by the uh, local organizer um and then they did put that low line what greg rode the wide line that that greg rode with his feet out and then got back to the berm like and maybe like 40 percent of people rode that line but they did put that in in case it got wet and i think that was still the line to ride if you wanted to get down that section safely unless you're a uh, Remy Turion or someone like that. <laughs> yeah, so that's interesting that they put lines like that. And I think that's really cool that they're willing to adjust on the fly or they, they had a dry line and then maybe everyone gave feedback and said, well, that's not going to be safe or if it rains, which it looks like the Good. forecasts are showing that. So that's, that's really cool to hear. But yeah, Leger is just historically one of the most challenging tracks to get right. And as you said, with the ruts, 
with it being dry, then going to wet, it takes a lot of rain, a lot of bikes to, to get down. So, I mean, that is a topic of the race, is the conditions. Yes. They were yep. treacherous. And and, uh, and probably changed a little bit as well as the race went on. They yeah they, the, they changed the whole way through the women's race and then in the, into the men's race as well. Like, if you look at how muddy certain riders were, some people were really muddy. And then others, like Greg, was pretty clean in comparison. Like, not saying he rode down an easy track, though. No, like, no, I know you're not. Maybe maybe a lot worse in certain sections, but then other sections might have been better. So it's like such a way up of conditions. Yeah, I mean, we could literally take a minute to talk about this race or three hours to go back and forth <laughs> on who had the most optimum conditions or what would you rather <laughs> pick. And I'm not taking, I'd never sit here and take away from anyone that got down the hill. We can only speak to the conditions were different as they developed through the ladies and then the men as well. You looked at conditions, you looked at sometimes there was a little bit of dust sitting under the clay and then later on there were rivers running down the track. And then in between that is probably the worst conditions. You know, Greg had no information he he, yeah, he he just just the woman's race yeah so he had he the had, women's which race is probably the worst information like, yeah would you really want to watch the women's race two people i made would it watch down. it myself like if i was racing i'd watch it just because you see the track so it's like track information but you can't necessarily take from the riding you know like, i was gonna say would you not yeah. be more cons- would you not ride subconsciously more conservative after watching eight people crash <laughs> 